For each week of the past month, I've made one quick tutorial and posted it on my social media. People seem to have liked them quite a bit, so I decided to take all of them and put into this one YouTube video. This video is a collection of four quick Photoshop tutorials, inspired by edits seen in YouTube thumbnails, and I plan to make these a monthly occurrence. Enjoy! I've been thinking about this thumbnail since the first moment I saw it. It's very clean and I love how it looks, especially the glitch effect on the face. So please allow me to demonstrate how to achieve this effect. Once you have your person and glitch texture inside the Photoshop, select the texture layer and then go to Filter. Then scroll down to Distort and choose Ripple. The value of 30% seems to be good, so let's go with it. Then, you want to change the blend mode to Linear Dodge. After this, create an inverted layer mask and with soft brush and low brush flow, slowly paint on the area where you want the effect to be visible. And with this, we pretty much have the same effect as the reference thumbnail. Well, let's take it a few steps further. I'll select the main person layer, duplicate it, and then move it from the original position just a few pixels to the right. Then I'll open the blending options and under advanced blending, I'll only keep the red channel active. Then I will once again duplicate the layer and move it to the left from the original position. But for this one, I'll turn off the red channel and keep the blue and green active to get the cyan color. To take this overall glitch effect further, I'll duplicate the original Mr. Beast photo once again and place it on top, just under the texture layer. Then I will select that layer and go to Filters, Stylize, and click on Wind. Inside the pop-up window, I'll select Stagger Method and Direction from left to right. This will create this interesting wind distortion, so I'll repeat a few times. Once I'm happy with the look, I'll create an inverted layer mask on it, and with the same brush settings as before, I'll paint on the right side of the face. With this approach, you can apply any texture you want and it should look interesting enough. And if you want to play around with the textures I use for this example, head over to Thumbnails 101 Discord server and check it out. These torn shirts are very often seen in YouTube thumbnails, especially in the Mr. Beast ones, but there aren't any good tutorials for this effect, so here is an easy one you can start with. Once you have your subject in place, create an empty new layer and fill it up with any color. After that, create an inverted layer mask on it, and with the selection tool of choice, draw the shape of the shirt hole. Once you have the selection, fill it up and keep the selection active. Make sure the layer mask is selected, and then go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and inside the brush strokes, choose the spatter effect. Play with the sliders on the right, and once you have the desired look, press OK. Clean up the edges, and then find a skin area from the photo, make a rough selection, and duplicate it. This will be the skin that's visible inside the shirt hole, so position it over the hole and apply the layer mask we created moments ago. Go to the layer style and turn on the inner shadow. If you want the ripped edges to be even more realistic, choose a scattered brush and paint on the edges. In this case, I'm using the bushes brush from the Thumbnails Plus pack. With this same brush, I'll also draw the connecting strings over the hole. Then, to make it even more realistic, I'll create a negative exposure layer and with the soft brush paint on the bottom edge like this, which is going to give it yet another layer of depth. These torn shirts are usually very dirty, so make sure to add some wrinkled textures around the holes and even more dirty effects to sell the realism. At the moment, I'm working on this thumbnail for an upcoming boss video, and I had to turn this black Samsung into a silver one. So let's make this editing process this week's quick thumbnail tutorial. For step one of this process, you want to paint over the area you wish to change with gray color. I did it through a solid color adjustment layer, which later easily lets me change the gray to any other color if necessary. Once that was done, I changed the blend mode of the layer from normal to linear dodge. With this, the hardest part of the job was done, and as you can see, the results are astonishing. But to make it even better, I added a curve adjustment layer, where I pulled the slider from the middle down like this. This brings out the contrast in darker areas of the phone. To make sure the phone is 100% gray, I'll add this hue and saturation adjustment layer, duplicate the mask of the phone, and then move the saturation slider all the way to the left. As you can see, all the blue tones that were inside the original photo are gone. And now if I want, I can easily go back to the gray color layer and change the hue and saturation, or even lightness, if I messed it up at the start. There are many other techniques of turning black objects into white, but this one probably takes the least amount of time and works really well, especially if the source assets are high quality. Fun fact, I post these quick video tutorials weekly on all my social media, so feel free to follow me if you want to keep improving your thumbnail editing. For the purpose of this week's quick tutorial, Let's imagine you made this perfectly fine thumbnail, but the client wants to change the giant wooden crate into this one. One of the ways to make this change would be by using the Perspective Warp tool, and here's how it works. 
First, let's start by getting rid of the parts we don't need. By using the selection tool of choice, delete the top side of the crate as well as the bottom part. Then, make sure to turn the layer into a smart object. Once that's done, you want to scale and position the crate accordingly. After that, go to Edit and choose Perspective Warp. Then, click and drag to create the perspective grid. To adjust it correctly, select each corner pin and then move them to the each corner of crate. When you're done with one, go ahead and draw another grid on the other side. The connecting grid sides will snap automatically, so you only have to adjust two corners in this case. If necessary, zoom in and put the corner pins in the right position. When you're done, in the top left corner press on warp, and then start adjusting the overall perspective of the crate. Again, if you notice you need to adjust the perspective, remember that you're working on a smart object so you can come back to it anytime and make it pixel perfect. Anyway, let's show the perspective warp tool in action once again by adding this drawn question mark to the side. When you create the perspective grid, you're also able to scale and reposition your element. This adds one more layer of flexibility. Once I have it in place, I'll just change the blend mode of the layer to get rid of the white background. And then also to get rid of the blue color, I'll open the Hue and Saturation Adjustment Editor and move the saturation slider all the way to the left. I will also take this graphic that goes to the other side of the crate and apply the same editing technique to end up with a proper replica of the crate from the Mr. Beast thumbnail. However, changing the blend mode for this element won't make it look realistic, so I'll have to rely on blending options. Inside blending options, I'll find the underlying layer and split the right slider to get the desired effect on the graphic. This will get the job done nicely, and by adding a few more minor effects, I've almost unintentionally recreated a Mr. Beast thumbnail. So here is a quick lesson for the end of this video. If you want to become a better designer but can't find the inspiration to make your own unique designs, take someone else's good work and try to recreate it from scratch. I guarantee you this is one of the best things you can do to grow as a designer. If you found this useful and want to stay up to date with these quick tutorials, make sure to follow me on all my social media. And if by any chance you didn't get the Thumbnails Plus Assets collection yet, check it out the first link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.